Um, I was told it might be a little wordy, so I condensed it, but now here you've got the whole thing. I don't even have to say anything. Um, you know, I started my career 10 years ago working with those on the autism spectrum, and one of the things that I found a lot of the times were those families that would come to me and say, what's next? What do we do? And, you know, that's what really prompted me to get into consulting and working with families. Because whether your child's 15, 18, or 28, it's never too early or too late to really start looking at what, is, what does the future look like? Um, you know, so many families come to me and say, you know, we, we realize we're not going to be here forever. What, what's going to happen to our child? Um, and it's a really scary place to be in. And so really, you know, going back to the Thinking Positive, there are some incredible programs out there um, that really are um, supportive of the autism community, of the LD community, of the community with mental illness, and really locating those programs is what I specialize in and in helping with families. Because there are so many out there, and I think what happens a lot of times is parents, they get overwhelmed, and some programs might be right for other kids, some might not be right for others. So really what I wanted to do is I talk about three things. Um, having a general understanding of your child's needs and abilities. Taking that, looking at what are some of the appropriate settings that support those abilities. And then also once your child gets into the setting, how to self-advocate. Because it's one thing to get into the right facility, it's another thing to really support them and have advocates around them to help them get everything they can out of the program. Um, we have photocopies as well, so you don't have to take notes. Um, so just a couple of things that I take into consideration when working with families is really looking at what is the current level of independence. Again, 15, 18, or 28. We really want to meet the young adult where <coughs> they're at and support them and, and really look at their strengths and build on those strengths because again we're thinking positively and you know there are so many wonderful opportunities out there. Once we've determined their level of independence we want to look at really what are the academic expectations and with the required supports. You know your child may want to go to community college, may want to get a bachelor's degree or your child may want to go to a trade school and have um, some type of vocation. So it really, you know, those are all of the things that we want to start talking about and looking at when we start planning for the future. Other things we talk about, challenges of in, in executive functioning. There are some great programs, CIP included, that specialize in executive functioning, talking about organization, time management. You know, you know, doctor, you were talking about, you know, are they able to get up in the morning and get out of bed? So what are some of those interventions that we need to put in place to help that young adult be successful. Other things, social skills development, um, another a big one is our mental health services. You know, a lot of our kids on the spectrum and also with learning disabilities may have co-occurring disorders. You know, I work with a lot of young adults that have generalized anxiety. Um, they may have significant social skills deficits. So we really want to take into consideration the, the child as a whole and also the family. What are the family's expectations? So those are some of the considerations that we really look at. Um, you can see, you know, there are a lot of different post-secondary options. You know, we can talk about more specifics um, in the next hour. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just, I want to go back to, you know, there's hope. There are placements out there. There are some really wonderful people that are caring, that are here, that want to help you. And you know, there, there's also programs that are on the horizon. I mean, you were talking about how you started out with 10 and now you have 150. So I think, you know, if we can identify a need, we can take those steps to really implement um, the programs that are effective for our young adults. I think that was, what, five minutes? <laughs> awesome. Um, other things to take into consideration, you know, Going back to the emotional component and working with families that say, you know, what's next? Um, making sure that you have a plan in place. And that's something that's not up here, but I'll add, you know, talking about conservatorships, talking about special needs trusts. These are all of the things that you need to start thinking about now, um, doing your research. There are some really wonderful 
people out there, whether it's Betzetic or there's several lawyers that are available, um, looking at what, what you need to do to prepare yourself to reduce that anxiety so that you're helping your child or your young adult be successful. Because they feel a lot of that anxiety as well. So making sure that they understand, you know, there is a plan in place and we can make a difference together. Um, and then accessing all these wonderful um, individuals. You know, there, there are a lot of us out here that want to help and that want to see you be successful and also want to see you choose the right program the first time. You know, that, that's the other thing is that we see a lot of kids that maybe bounce from program to program because they're not appropriate. And, you know, you need to take into consideration the emotional aspects of that. It's not just financial, because these programs are not inexpensive. So, you know, that's, that's the other part of it. They're, they are, some of them can be very expensive. But you also want to take into consideration the emotional cost of what is this going to be like for my child if he fails? You know, what if my child wants to go to college and drops out the freshman year because they can't handle it? So now you're looking at that, that, that concept of failure. So what can we have done to have supported them in that environment prior to going? Um, those are all, as I know I leave you with a lot of different questions, but these are the things that I ask you to ponder, um, which is why I thank you, CIP, for including me. And I think it's wonderful that we have events like this that start the dialogue. Because again, I don't think it's ever too early or too late to really start the conversation. So that was 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>